Okay, so we're going to talk today about sound waves. The um, presentation I'm going over today is going to be available. And so I'm going to narrate over it a little bit. And uh, I would highly suggest going back through it and watching the videos that are embedded in it, if you can. Because that will help as well. I can't play these videos while I'm narrating as well. So, All right, so sound waves. Uh, we're going to look today at some sounds. If you think about sound waves... You know, obviously, you, you hear them all the time. There's some nice sounds, like musical instruments, with certain people playing them, of course. And then there's some sounds that don't sound so nice, like rubbing your nails on a chalkboard. So we're going to kind of look at, you know, why do some things sound nice, why do some things not, and how do sound waves move, how fast they move, what are some typical frequencies you might hear, uh, those types of things. So first we go back to the different types of waves. I know I looked at this last week, but there are two types of waves. You have the transverse wave which has the uh, more like waves on a string, water waves, the particles of the medium, that's what the wave travels through, go up and down, and the wave itself moves side to side. So the particles go up and down, and the wave goes side to side. Then you have longitudinal waves, which the particles of the medium go in the same direction uh, that the oscillation was done. So if you look at that spring down at the bottom of the page, you see if somebody pushes a spring, you can see the wave moving through it, and you have dense areas, you have less dense area. These are sound waves. Okay, longitudinal waves um, are what sound waves are. Make sure you know that. Okay, so like talked about last week, there's wave speed. Same thing is uh, same type of uh, relationship with um, with waves. Okay, so you have the speed of anything is just how much distance did it cover over time. Um, and then for waves, you could say, what is the wavelength produced over a certain period of time, that, that the period of time that the wave was produced. If you know the wavelength and you know the period, especially with a consistent oscillation, um, like most sound is, <clears throat> or a lot of sound is, then you can find the speed of that wave. And one over the period is the frequency, so the speed of a wave is frequency times wavelength. Same thing for waves, or for sound waves as they are for any other waves. Okay, so first we're going to briefly discuss reflections. So you've probably seen something like this before, but if you've ever listened to an instrument, what you're actually hearing is standing waves that are being formed uh, in the instrument. And when those standing waves are formed correctly, they sound good. Uh, and those are known as harmonics, or fundamental frequencies, <coughs> harmonics, overtones. You'll hear a bunch of different terms with it, but... This is what standing waves look like on a string. You can make them with a string if you can get the oscillation just right, uh, the oscillation frequency just right. Okay, so when it reflects, it creates this standing wave pattern if you keep the oscillations going. Now, if we were at school, I have a, a string generator where you could actually see these oscillations in person. Um, and there's a video embedded in this where you could see it as well. All right, so with standing waves, you have... Um, the wave being generated, and then you have the reflecting wave. And when the frequency is just right, how fast the oscillation is happening, and the frequency has to be just right with the tension in the string, the speed of the wave on the string has to be just right, <clears throat> it will form these standing waves. And if you go a little bit faster, um, you'll form even more standing waves, and more, more standing waves, not faster, sorry, uh, oscillate with a higher frequency. So interference patterns are what these are called. Okay, these patterns form only at very specific frequencies, and it's true of any waves, um, but probably where you see it the most is with sound waves. There's actually also some relation with these standing waves uh, when you look at the modern theory of the atom as well, which we'll get into later on this year. All right, so this is what certain standing waves would look like. Your first standing wave pattern is going to look like this. This, if you look, is actually only half of a wavelength. Okay, you have from the midline and then back over to the midline, and it's half a wavelength. <clears throat> this is known as the fundamental frequency. Okay, and for a string, the fundamental frequency is going to be going to give you this first standing wave pattern. And then the second standing wave pattern is two of these, and these are known as antinodes. The uh, the large parts are known as antinodes, and then where the waves kind of meet at the ends and then form the spot here are known as the nodes. 
and then so this would be the second harmonic and you notice here there's actually a full wavelength okay and that's why you have a full wavelength here here you have one and a half wavelengths so this is the third harmonic and then the fourth so for a string any time basically every antinode one of these big parts that's going to be a harmonic okay so for to find the frequency of standing waves on a string you need to know which harmonic you're on okay you need to know that's n you need to know the speed of the wave on a string okay so that's going to depend on how tight the string is what the string's made of all those different things and then you need to know how long the string is and so if you ever watch somebody tune a guitar you've probably seen um you've probably seen them put <clears throat> hold their finger in a place what they're doing is shortening the string as they move their hands up and down the guitar and then if you look closely at the strings you may notice some are thicker than others and then at the end of the guitar there is a way that they can tighten the strings that makes it to where the speed of the wave will change if you tighten the string and so that's why you're seeing those variables play out in what the sound is like so somebody that's tuning a guitar is trying to get the frequency just right and they're tampering with the length of the string and the speed of the wave generally on a guitar you're playing it's the first harmonic every time you strum it but um, depending on the problem if you're at the second or third harmonic you just put a one two or three here fourth harmonic whatever so n is whatever harmonic number you're on and for strings that would be the number of antinodes the big the big part of the waves understanding waves okay so for this example it gives you it says waves on a string are made to vibrate at the third harmonic the length of the string is two meters and the speed of the waves is 200 meters per second what is the frequency of the wave? So, you take the, right, your givens, of course, n is equal to 3 because you're on the third harmonic, right, 3, third. The length of the string is 2 meters, and the speed of the wave is 200 meters per second. That's pretty fast uh, for the speed of the waves on a string. And then you put in the equation nv over 2l, so you have 3 by 200, 600 divided by 4, and the frequency of that uh, wave will be 150 hertz. And then the wavelength, remember wavelength, or <clears throat> the speed of a wave, any wave is frequency times wavelength. You know the frequency, and you know the speed of the wave. You plug that in, and you get 1.33 meters. And then what would happen if the string was tightened and the speed of the waves increased? Well, if the speed of the waves increased, you'd have a bigger number here. So you could say... Um, you know, pretend this was 400. You really tighten it up. Anytime you tighten up a string, you're going to make the wave speed go up. And you could test this yourself. You could get a string and pull it, have it loose, and then pull it tight and make waves. And you could tell that they'll move faster when it's tighter. So say this goes to 400. Okay, well, now you have 3 times 400, okay, which is 1200 divided by 4. And you'll notice that your frequency would go up. So what would happen if the string is tightened and the speed of waves increased? your frequency should go up. All right, so let's talk about sound waves. Uh, sound is known as a longitudinal wave and mechanical because most waves we're going to study right now are mechanical. The, the only thing that's not mechanical waves is, is electromagnetic waves like light and any kind of electromagnetic radiation. So, so what it actually does is sound vibrates the air around it and you're actually hearing those vibrations. So if you, this is a tuning fork, if you strike a tuning fork, you hear it because it sends sound waves through the air. Uh, and so sound is always produced by the vibration of matter. Okay, You knock on a desk, uh, you bang on a pan, whatever. You have to vibrate something. When you talk, your vocal cords are vibrating. Um, this is what they look like through the air if you could uh, look at the air particles. You have certain areas that are really compressed and then certain areas that are not compressed. And these are known as compressions, obviously for the compressed part. And then the part uh, that is not compressed in between is known as the rarefactions. And this is also, sound is also called a pressure wave. So a longitudinal wave or pressure wave, you'll see it both ways. And uh, so make sure you know those terms, compressions, rarefactions. All right, so here's one thing to keep in mind about sound. The medium determines, determines how fast sound travels. So through air, sound travels about 340 meters per second. Through solids, depending on what the solid is, it travels a lot faster. It travels a lot faster through water, uh, a little over a thousand meters per second through water. Okay, so you'll note the only thing that if you're in air, which is most, you know, we, we think of sound just traveling through air, the only thing that really changes between sounds is the frequency and, of course, how loud it is. So 
you'll notice that a lower frequency would look like this. You'd have a long wavelength. And on the shorter frequency, you have a, or on the higher frequency, sorry, you have a shorter wavelength. But no matter what, the speed of sound stays the same. It's always whatever the medium allows it to be. A couple things with sound. You think of pitch and loudness. This is how high something sounds is the pitch. And the loudness, of course, is how loud it is. Um, and the loudness is related to the amplitude. And it's how much energy the wave has. Think about banging a drum. If you barely touch it, it'll make a noise. If you hit it really hard, it'll make a louder noise, but it'll sound similar. right? It doesn't really matter. Like The pitch will be the same either way. Um, but it'll it'll sound similar. It'll just be louder. How much energy you put in is based on the loudness, and that'll be the amplitude of the wave. Um, I can't play this because I'm the program I'm using, but you should play this. See how old your ears are. This is a really interesting video. It's only a minute long, so um, go ahead and play it. We can only hear things that are between 20 to 20,000 hertz. So when you think of dog whistles, you know you can't hear them. That's because the dogs can hear above 20,000 hertz. So where you can't hear it. Uh, the dogs will. So try this video out. You'll see kind of where the range of your ears are. Mine ends at like uh, 15,000 hertz. I can't hear anything over 15,000 hertz. People older than me, it would be even worse. All right, so what is the speed of sound? We're going to use 340 meters per second for the speed of sound every time in air. Okay, it's a lot faster in different mediums, but we're going to think of it in air. And we're going to use 340 all the time. It's just a round number. It's actually 343.2 in room temperature air. As the temperature fluctuates, the speed of sound changes and all that, which we're not going to get into, but this is the main number. We still use the same equation. So for a sample problem, you have the wavelength of a sound wave with a frequency of 200 hertz. So you, on these problems, you're not, going to be given the, you're not going to be given the velocity. It's known. It's 340. Okay. So you'll notice when I did the work, 340 divided by 200. So... The speed of sound is frequency times wavelength. Wavelength is velocity over frequency. And so you'll notice uh, I just knew the 340 was there. So remember, you're doing a sound wave problem. The speed of sound is 340. B is interesting. You're you're in a canyon, right, and you yell, and you want to know how long it's going to take to hear the echo. Well, an echo means the sound travels to the wall and comes back. So that means it goes all the way to the wall hits the wall and has to come back. So the distance, notice I'm using distance over time now. You can do that too, based on your givens. The distance is actually 170 meters times two, because it's got to go there and back. So it's 340 over 340, so it'll take a full second for you to hear your echo. All right, so for instruments and standing waves, you may have seen people blowing on bottles before. Instruments uh, work on the principle of compressions and rarefactions happening in tubes and then those reflections take place and you have standing waves in the instruments. Okay, so wind instruments produce these standing waves depending on how they're made. I would definitely watch that video if I were you, especially if you love instruments. So here's what standing waves look like in an open pipe. You'll notice you use the same equation, NV over 2L. Uh, this is what the first harmonic would look like. And this, of course, these are actually compressions and rarefactions, but you're you know, have to represent them as a wave you can see. So when you're doing a problem like this, and this is what your concept builder will be over, you're just going to use NV over 2L or 4L. So like this one, what's the fundamental frequency? If you see fundamental, that means N equals 1, right? And so you just plug it all in and solve. And that frequency here is going to be what the sound you'll actually hear. The 340, that's the speed of sound. When you're doing these uh, standing wave problems with with instruments, you always use 340 for the speed of sound. If you're doing it with strings, you use whatever the velocity on the string is. Okay. And then for a half-closed tube, the only thing it changes, you put a 4 down there, and that's because the first harmonic is only forming formed with a quarter of a wavelength. So you have the when the when the standing wave forms, it only forms with a quarter of a wavelength. If you get some bottles, fill them up different sizes you'll notice there's different sounds based on how much of an air column is in here. And you could actually use this equation to figure out the basic frequency of that sound. And on these, only odd harmonics are possible. All right, so at the end of this, you got videos. You can watch them. Uh, that is all I got. Uh, make sure you remember for the quiz that Coach Sawyer's favorite animal is an ostrich. 
an ostrich. That is the answer to the last question of the quiz. Thanks and gig'em.